My guest at this time is a very talented actress. You may have recognized her uh, as Rachel Manning on the show Sybil. She is now on the uh, hit show over on ABC called Big Sky, a little bit close to my heart because I'm uh, originally from Montana, um, where I'm really, uh, really honored to have uh, Dee Dee Pfeiffer on with us right now. How are you doing, Dee Dee? I'm doing great. Thank you, Mark. I'm honored to be on your show. <laughs> Tell me a little bit, well, first of all, it's been kind of been interesting because some of these shows um, either just wrapped or had or were supposed to be wrapped right before the pandemic started. Uh, what was going on with Big Sky? Was it something that was already in the can before the pandemic started? Well, you know, actually, that's a crazy story. Um, we literally went to New Mexico to start. We did pre-production. We were. This is all the stuff you do before you actually, you know, start filming. And wardrobe, makeup. Hey, how are you? Nice to meet. Greet. This is like in the olden days where you could hug somebody and shake their hand, no mask, you saw their face. And then um, we did one day of shooting, like one. I flew home to get my boys all settled because mama was going to go back and start, you know, laying down some some film or some, uh, yeah, track. So literally on the way home, somebody was saying, Didi, you've got to get toilet paper when you get home. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, a pandemic, what does that even mean? So literally I landed in LA and I noticed we had three rolls of toilet paper. So I went to Costco, big mistake. The, this was when LA was out of their minds. I almost got like, oh, it was scary. I'm still like PTSD, just trying to get toilet paper at Costco. And then went home and a couple days later, we were shut down, done. Phil sent everybody home and we just shut down. So we barely got started. And then when we came back around, they said, oh, change of uh, arena. Now we're in Vancouver. So we're, I'm actually in Vancouver right now. And that's where we've been filming. So, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, Vancouver seems to be very, very, um, it's one spot that a lot of productions have been going to. I mean, is this your first time shooting up in, a, in Vancouver? Actually, no. I've been in Canada quite a few times back in the day when I was younger. I love it. I've always been threatening to move here anyways. So if Big Sky gets picked up, <laughs> you know, I'm here most of the time. Maybe I'll grab my boys and my fur babies and my <coughs> baby and move here. Who knows? Well, why did this decision to come back to acting? It, it, was, it seemed like there's a little bit of a gap there uh, between when you were really, you was like you were a little on a real role right there for a while. And now you're back on a, on a major series. I mean, kind of what was the thinking in that? Well, <laughs> oh, excuse me. Um, 10 years ago, I decided that I needed to do something more um, meaningful in my life. Although I, as an actor, I tried to do projects that were meaningful, but it's kind of difficult when you don't always get cast and you don't get to pick and choose what uh, projects you do. But I also did a lot of volunteer work on the side, constant volunteer work. Long story short, I started, I, I started realizing I needed to help people. I needed to do something on a larger scale. So I did this thing that I heard, which is like, go to school and go get a degree. I thought it would take me like a year. 10 years later, <laughs> I finally got, it took me four years to get a, a, an AA so that I could get my bachelor's of psych, which was two years, and then three years to get my master's, which was a two year degree, long story. I had two kids in tow, and now I'm a social worker. I have a social worker's degree. My area of concentration is uh, those without homes, mental illness, substance use, social welfare issues on all levels. Um, and then this opportunity just fell in my lap, when, literally while I was f finishing my last year of my master's. Um, so I was like, really? So of course I grabbed it. I'm 56. I mean, it's not like you get a lot of <laughs> acting gigs you know, as a woman in, in my age range um, and this opportunity. So um, I was extremely excited and I'm excited to one day blend my beautiful, amazing fan base and my social worker degree together and help people on even a larger scale than I ever could imagine just being in the field without um, my fan base. I know quite a few actors that I've, I've talked over the years that, that love, you know, I asked, you know, if they didn't go into acting, what they would do. A lot of them would say that they would go into the kind of the psycho psychology realm and mm -hmm. to be able to um, kind of draw from that. And they kind of feel that that's kind of a natural, kind of almost like a natural thing for them as well. I mean, it, was that was that the same thing for you? I mean, going being an, an, an actor and being able to um, almost um, be in other people's minds and kind of you know think different differently and kind of you know act that way. Did that kind of kind of influence you into wanting to to get this degree? Oh my God, absolutely! Because as an actress, I I never just approached my uh, 
uh, characters on a linear level. I, it was always like the psychology behind the character. It's not that they were a murderer or codependent or whatever the character was, it was the why. So I always was investigating very interesting psychology behind it. And that also, I also looked at it from a biopsychosocial level each character so you really create a rich character from um from coming from all different you know aspects so when i went into um to get my degree i came in with that same lens um being interested in human behavior overall and um so that gave me a great shoe in but you know what held me back and took me forever is that i'm right-brained i am not left-brained i discovered in college i have a learning disability i discovered that i when they tested me Dude, they tested me. I was less than a second grader. I didn't know what a thesis statement was. I, I was like, why is it two plus X equals five? That's a typo. Why is there an X in there? Like, I did not understand algebra. I graduated in 1982. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't have computers. We certainly didn't take notes. We didn't take finals. So when I went to college, I had to take a lot of prerequisites just to get to the, the first degree. So it was a journey. Uh, definitely. Um, you know, speaking of, of, of that, I mean... You were in probably one of the most popular scenes um, of one of the one of probably one of the most popular movies um, there was falling down. And I want to ask you about that scene, because, first of all, you're you're you were across across the way from a, an Oscar winner, uh, you know, and it was it was um, Michael Douglas. And it was a really great um, it's a really great scene in the um, in working between yourself and before yourself and him. Tell me a little bit about working at that scene. Um, falling down was, it was actually crazy how I got it. I read for Joel Schumacher for a show called Malibu 2000 that he loved me for, but he gave it to Drew Barrymore, but he really liked my audition that he said, oh, I'm doing this feature. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm like, would you mind, or do you want to do a little role? And I was like, do I want to do a little role in a Michael Douglas film? Yeah, that's an actor's dream come true. So Drew got the series, right? And I got the little role in falling down. And um, when I got to the wardrobe fitting and I saw the scene, they put the hamburger on my head. And I thought, this is going to be my acting like big shot as I'm going to be wa- working with Michael Douglas with a hamburger on my head. Luckily, the, my training, again, went into the psychological aspects of this character. So I was able to score her in such a way that um, when I first played it, I played it like she was Bonnie waiting for her Clyde to come in. <laughs> so when Michael Douglas comes in, um, but notes to him, she's like so excited to see it. It's like her Clyde just showed up and is going to take her away from Whammy Burger. And this is all my inner story. And Michael Douglas was laughing and Jill Schumacher. But I think, um, you know, when we did that, when we filmed that, that was literally, I was waiting for my set call the next day when the riots broke out. We had to wait for about a month or two before we actually filmed my scene because the riots broke out. So I seem to do a lot of projects when things keep happening. <laughs> Pandemic on this one, riots on that one. But, and then when we, when we finally aired the movie, because it was still such a sensitive raw time for people, it was kind of a hard movie to watch, really, if you think about what, the, what the, this journey was with that character, Michael Douglas' character, and what was going on with the emotional temperature after the riots. Yeah, really, really exciting, proud to be in there. And there, it goes to show you there's no small role, only small actors, because that was a teeny role. And I was in all the trailers, and it was it was such a fun, it was just a, a great time, because Michael Douglas is so amazing. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, it was probably one of the most popular scenes in the movie, because I think people kind of related to it, yeah. um, their frustrations. So that was kind of great as well. I would be I would be remiss not to ask you, because my mom, is a huge Murder, She Wrote fan. And you actually did play a role on Murder, She Wrote. What was it like working on the set with Angela Lansbury? Well, you know, I'm of the older population. Like I said, I'm 56. So, you know, I know my kids were like, Angela who? I'm like, ah, never mind. <coughs> she literally was like the, she was the, you know, the cream on the top, you know, that's actors go and actresses. So back then when you were running around trying to audition, when you got a murder, she wrote guest starring role. It was like equivalent to like a guest starring role in Seinfeld or Friends, right? It was seriously up there back then. So um, she was amazing, gracious um just so like seasoned as an actor and a lovely woman beautiful accent gracious and as a young actress it was really nice to watch a real uh woman with integrity professionalism team player um learn from her 
Because back in the day when we were acting, you learn from those, you know, who were seasoned, who, you know, paved the road for us. Um, we never took that for granted. And um, so for me on my resume, the new generation doesn't, they go right past that. I don't. I tell your mom, I said, hi. <laughs> I will let know. I'm pretty sure she's going to be listening on. So um, it's great to be able to, to, to hear that as well. Um, let's talk a little bit about Sybil. I mean, to have a series, to be, be a regular on a series like that, and such an award-winning series as well. You guys got nominated for a Best Ensemble Cast for that series. I mean, what's, what was it like working on the set of, of Sybil for all those years? Sybil, that was so, that was really wild because um, that was my very first uh, big series, you know, on such a huge, uh, like, people started recognizing me down the street. You know what I mean? I went from, I could go to the same grocery store every day and could be under the radar. And then when that aired, all of a sudden I kind of got fingers pointed at me and like, hey, wait a minute. I didn't know you. You're on Sybil. Really crazy time for me. Um, super fun. Alicia and I, she played, you know, my sister on it. We became really tight. Uh, Peter, who played my husband on it, he was so great. You know, um, it was a really crazy set. It was fun. Um, we worked really hard on that you know, really hard. Um, I just was really new to the game. So I just, again, was sitting back trying to learn from everyone around me. Um, it's cool though. I love that was it. probably one of the, one of the first really strong female casts we've seen in a, you know, in a comedy role like that. Um, and that was started at the beginning of it as well. And, um, you know, obviously the act, the actresses on that show have went on to do really great things, including yourself. So it's, it was amazing to kind of see where, how successful that was. And it was kind of what spurred on to, maybe some of the later sitcoms and later dramas that we, we've seen later on. Mm. It's so true because really, I mean, I was um, accidentally before Sybil, I was in cast and Sybil, I was watching AbFab. I was a huge AbFab fan, the original one. And most people in America hadn't really caught on to AbFab yet. So when I read Sybil, I went, oh my God, this is very much of that same, you know, school, the two crazy, the two women and just running around creating havoc who are polar opposites. Um, but, but um, compliment each other. They become like each other's yin to their yang. So yeah, and Christy Gransky is just so talented, so funny. She's great. Well, I'll make a confession. I am an AbFab fan. I was, I watched it, watched quite a few seasons of that when it was uh, available here in the United States. So yeah, yeah, I have to agree with you on that. And um, I mean, yeah, it's kind of crazy to just, 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 just to think about how how much that that series has done. Done. I think it's 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 a little bit low key. So maybe it's for some of the younger younger people that are that are watching the tv now but it was kind of almost groundbreaking so it's great to be able to see that 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 had you were a part of that as well and i can i'll mention that civil right now i think all the entire series is available on cbs all access so if you guys missed out you guys can go and check that out on cbs all access now so um you can see uh older parts of the series as well so i highly recommend you do that as well but let's talk a little bit about big sky i mean Tell me a little bit about, you know, when, when you got the character and what was your thoughts when you uh, first got the script? Well, oh, wow. It's, uh, it, for me, it's really hard to describe, but I will tell you this, Mark, buckle up because you're going to go for a ride and you're going to love the show. It's very David E. Kelly. Like, it's just really him and all of his fabulous writers, the production. He created an, an incredible cast of eclectic characters to play eclectic um, actors, to play eclectic characters in a story that is going to be scary, sexy, emotionally charged surprises. I mean, when I read the pilot, I, when I finished, I went back two pages. So I thought I was missing a page or I read it wrong and I read it and I reread it and I read it three times. And I went, no, I read that correctly, and I just went, oh, my God, this show is going to be explosive. It's going to um, – I can't give anything away, but let me just say, um, you're not going to be uh, – you won't be let down. You're going to, you're not, you're going to like, can't wait for the next episode. It's definitely – yeah. Uh, what was it like working on set? I mean, you know, Ryan Phillippe is one of the one of the – I think one of the uh, – you know, I think one of the um, – was the under um, – underknown actors – out there that is really, really experienced, really, really good actor as well. And you work very close with him on the, on the set. Um, David E. Kelly, obviously really, you know, really solid producer and all that as well. Tell me a little bit about just working on the set in general. Well, we're in COVID times, dude, we are writing the, the playbook on how to film in the most absurd times. I right now can't tell you that I could recognize any crew member <laughs> if they walk by me without a mask. 
We have bubbles, A bubble, B bubble, C bubble. We get COVID tested twice a week. We, um, nobody's on the set unless you